So now we're going to look at Repetier Server. When you load into Repetier Server, this is the thing that you see. It's a dashboard. And so you just are seeing that my printer, I walked over and I turned on the CR10 and you see that it went from offline to now it's suddenly green and online. So I have this howling printer behind me now, of course, but it's really nice because I see both of my printers. And if I am at work and I want to be watching them, they're sitting here, little views of all my printers and you can do up to five printers that you can be watching kind of a farm if you will. And it's really, really nice, <laughs> like really nice. Um, as you can see that there's some uh, okay signs that I have printing, which is a whole nother video on the Mark III. And you can see the CR10 has got nothing, of course. It's just sitting there um, because it's noisy and you can hear it in the background now. So let's play with the CR10 then. Um, the biggest problem that I did see with all of this is you got to be really careful about what printer you're selecting because you can, if you work hard enough at it, start doing things to the wrong printer. Um, and I killed a print that way. So these are just some of the different things recently that I printed so that I happen to have G-code that's sitting on the server for the CR10. Now, if I went to the Mark III, it's got different G code there because it's a different printer and it was loaded separately. And this is showing what the, the current status of a print is. Um, so on this is the Mark III, it's actually printing. We're 79.9% through. Estimated completion is two hours and 40 minutes. Um, it tells you what layer height, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how you're, you can upload files and group things together if I wanted to do that. And then you can select them and print. Now up at the top up here, you see that there's a nice little dashboard that shows what flow rate that you're printing, um, the fan speeds, the hot end, and the bed temp. All of that just really nicely right there. And in fact, if you're at the main screen, you can see a lot of this information right on the main screen at a glance. Um, which makes it really, really neat. So now the next thing is you can see, well, let's go to the controls. So if you're at a contr the controls here, I can actually watch live as the printer's doing what it's doing on the uh, real, real time. Now, one thing you do want to be careful about is if you start sliding the, these uh, around, if you start sliding this stuff around, it can, it'll actually start moving the printer around. So I don't want to mess with anything because I don't want to kill these prints that are almost finished. Um, so that's live. You can literally see it printing and where it's at and what it's printing, which is really cool. Um, what else? The other thing that's nice about this, really awesome, is excluding G-code. This section right here. Let's say you've got a, like what I've got is a full bed of prints happening. And let's say half of the bed had a disaster. Well, the other half is okay. So you can literally add a region and just draw it around here. And it'll automatically just stop printing in that area. It is absolutely amazing. And it works. So you can literally save half of a print bed and let it finish the other half. Uh, it's I haven't had to play with it a lot because I don't have that many failed prints, but I just used it and it was it worked amazing. Um, you can wire your lights into it so you can turn lights on and off for your printers. I kind of deep down I'm wondering if I you can do a whole like power strip for that. Um, I just haven't done it yet. I'm thinking about it. And again, all your homings and movings of different axes, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've got uh, changing filaments. Um, the, I'm just going to switch printers because I don't want to accidentally do the wrong thing. So we're going to go to the CR10, which is nice and safe. <laughs> so this one, you can actually see the printer in this window over here. And if I wanted to just go up, it's literally moving up right now. Let me go adjust that camera a little bit.
Sorry about that. <laughs> Makes it easier to see. So, and all I did was slide it. And if I wanted to move the, the x-axis over a little bit, I can move it in the center of the bed. Once it gets done moving that really, really slow. So, I mean, you literally can move it around. And if I want to move the bed a little bit, ouch. <laughs> Should probably always uh, unknit things first. <laughs> it kind of ran into it. It was already at a hard stop. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. You can move things around just by sliding these little bars around, which is kind of cool. Um, you can move the uh, zoom in and out on the bed if you need to. Um, turn the motors off. This gets into the changing filaments. If you see up here that I'm at 21 and 25. I literally can just tell it to to heat up at this point by sliding this and it'll heat the, t the extruder up. I can change the temps over here, heated bed. I can manually manipulate the extruder for putting filament in and out. Or if I want to manually move it this way, I can do that as well, including step sizes. Um, just really, really, really amazing on what it does. I love this part because you literally can just slide it around instead of having to type in all the time. Um, you can see this is black up here. So if I decided I wanted to go to 74, and let's just go, we'll tell it to go to 210. You can see it goes red. And as soon as it's red, that means that it's heating up. So if we went to monitor the temperature, you can actually see that I'm ramping up to 210 and this is my hot end that's ramping up. Now if I did the bed, I would do the same thing. The bed would would heat up. Well, let's let's do that. Let's we'll heat the bed up to say 40 41. So now you can see up here it just kicked in and now we see oh, there's the bed and the hot end are both heating up. Voila. It's it's really neat. I it's I like it. it's just point click, drag around. It's awesome. Um, so then you also have commands you can do uh, for, for the consoles. Uh, I, I'm not going to worry about the, talking about that. Um, so anyways, I'm going to tell this one to go off and this one to go off. Uh, we don't need them ramping up. So then you also have this, which is the console that allows you to enter in commands and filter things accordingly. A lot of them have that. Um, and then of course your webcam. One thing I do like about this is it has the ability to easily and quickly take higher quality. So the video I think that I get out of this is much higher than what I got out of the uh, OctoPrep. Can you compare this, this file here to what you're seeing in OctoPrep? It's just grainier. Um, but it is a webcam difference as well. But anyway, uh, I just prefer this one. It seems a little sharper. It was easier to, to get a higher quality picture out of it. And you can do all your normal webcam, webcam-y stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the biggest thing that we have going on. Uh, it does send print, uh, messages as to what's going on, what your status of your different printers are. When you're finishing and you change prints, it'll ha show up there. Um, that's, of course, full screen to give it a little bit cleaner look. Um, and then all your updates. You can also reboot and restart things. You can check for updates and firmware changes. Um, all the information for your things. You got emergency stop. You can set all this stuff up as to what it wants, what scripts you want it to run when you do different things. Um, just works really, really good. Uh, then I don't know that there's much else I can show you. Um, look at the Mark III a little bit. Uh, again, I don't want to do anything major. You can see Mark III, interestingly enough, is uh, I think I need to do a pig cow or something. It's It fluctuates quite a bit compared to my CR-10 uh, when it's maintaining temp. It's 
a little slower to react. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything else. I can't think of anything else to show you that uh, that I haven't already talked about. So there you go. That I'm going to have to edit some of that down, I think, because it, it's getting kind of long. But there's a lot to these things. And the biggest thing... Oh, let's show you this last thing. So I just wanted to actually give you one more view. I'm just making sure that everything looks good. So this is the setup that I have. As you can see here, this is a 7-inch uh, Pi screen with Raspberry Pi 3 behind it and all the USBs, the two, two for the cameras and two for the um, printers all go into the Raspberry Pi and it lets me control both printers from this one floating screen as you can see I have on a uh, on a little flexible thing so then this is showing where we're currently at it shows all the information which is really cool and it shows all the the information like the layers and how many, what the height is that we're currently at, the temperatures, everything you need at a glance. It's also got this really cool uh, emergency stop button. You can, act, if you want to look into the parameters directly, you can get a picture of just showing what the parameters are. You can go to the print screen, which is where we just were. You can look at temp graphs, so you can actually see what the temperature of both the bed and the hot ends are. These, this is, as you can see up here, it says for the Prusa i3 Mark III. These are all the different touchscreen things that you can go into and control everything that we kind of showed already earlier. Um, you can go to the printers, and if I want to select the CR10 and go to home for that one, now I'm controlling the CR10 and looking at all of that. And as you can see, there's no print so I don't even have that as an option. Uh, you can select whatever the, the whatever G codes you want to print here. Um, everything you want to do. It's just and it's I like it because it's pretty responsive. Uh, I find myself using this all the time. Uh, I'll even use it. I mean, you quick clicks, and it, and then you can even use it to make sure your camera. So you're going through and setting up your camera right before you start things out. Uh, but yeah, I use this all the time. It's easier than walking the three feet to the computer. So that's pretty much where you're at. I, I mean, I was trying to compare the difference between Octoprint and Repetier Server. They're different. Uh, I personally feel like I'm enjoying Repetier Server better. Uh, ha having said that, I miss a lot of the plugins that you can do so easily on Octoprint. I wish Octoprint would be multi-server capable or multi-printer capable in one instance so you don't have to run multiple instances I just think it would be cleaner I really enjoy that I use that a lot um, it makes it really easy to bounce back and forth between multiple printers um, but anyways who, who knows we'll see how how it all works out um, I enjoy it it works great hopefully this helped you a little bit if you have any questions ask them down below I'll try and talk to them specific uh, I just wanted to give a kind of in one video a little bit Octoprint versus Repetier server and actually walk through each one of them um, really quickly-ish um, to show you what are the different features that can happen. And there's more in both of them that I didn't show and any of the Octoprint lovers are going to be completely mad that I missed stuff just like the Repetier people are the same way. Right now I enjoy Repetier server more than Octoprint. Will it stay that way? I, I really don't know. I will say though that I have not touched this Raspberry Pi and it's still set up to work with the Prusa right away. So who knows, maybe I'll switch back and play with that a little bit. I just feel like I'll miss the multi-printer piece. Um, so anyways, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the, the dislike, tell me why down below. If you want to support the channel, I would truly, truly appreciate it to keep things going. And you can use the links down below for the uh, Amazon affiliates. I've got some YouTube uh, or TubeBuddy links that are down there. So if you're doing any creation and have a channel of your own, you got to check out TubeBuddy. It'll save you so much time. 
Um, I didn't want to listen to the hype, and it's well-founded. It's good. Um, if you want to buy me a coffee, that seems to be the thing now. I love coffee. There's a link down below. You can do that as well. Um, yeah, anything you can do would be highly appreciated. But other than that, I do just appreciate you showing up and uh, doing all the talks and all the uh, questions that you give down below. It's really appreciated and it's fun to kind of have the back and forth a little bit. It's a great community and we got to keep at it. So have a good evening and print everything you can.